A few months ago, we built a TrueNAS scale server on this very old and very large desktop PC. And while it was a great success, I've always felt it was just too large. And to be honest, with all these fans, it's quite noisy and really ugly. And I've always wanted a NAS that was small, minimal, and even portable. So today, we're gonna install a much, much smaller NAS. So a company called Link Plus reached out to me and asked me to review the LinkStation N1. The LinkStation N1 is a mini NAS that's small, lightweight, and even portable. And even comparing the size of this box to this PC is pretty amazing. So in this video, I'm gonna install some hard drives in the N1 and get everything set up. And then we'll test all the features and we'll find out together how well the N1 performs and see if it's worth the $400 price tag. The LinkStation N1 is an all SSD NAS, which means no disks. The N1 includes six bays for SSDs. The front two bays are for the 2.5 SATA SSDs. And there are four additional bays on the bottom of the mini NAS for the M.2 NVMe SSDs. And both of these panel doors include heat sinks for cooling. So the N1 using SSDs will have faster read and write times than traditional disk drives. The N1 weighs 1.7 pounds and is eight inches by six inches and is 1.5 inches thick. So this mini NAS should fit in any situation. And this mini NAS supports full function Docker, virtualization, and even includes an Unraid license. And we can even build virtual machines on this system. And if you're feeling frisky, you can install Linux, Windows, or Android. And the N1 also supports hardware pass-through. So this simply means the N1 is not only a NAS, but it can be a private cloud or a home server. And that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the connections on the N1. The N1 includes a 2.5 gig ethernet port. And let me say, that was a mistake. Link Plus should have installed a 10 gig ethernet port. If you want the fastest read and write times across your wired network, then a 2.5 gig port is not fast enough. And 10 gig ethernet ports should be the standard for all NAS and home servers. Just saying. So hopefully Link Plus can upgrade this feature in the future. And speaking of 10 gig, the M1 does have a 10 gig USB Type-C port. And it also has one HDMI 2.0, as well as two USB 3.0s. And also includes a 3.5 audio port. The specs inside this mini NAS are pretty impressive. This mini NAS comes with the Intel Celeron N5105 CPU, which means four cores and also includes 16 gigs of RAM. And the N1 does include Bluetooth 5.2 and Wi-Fi 6. And all of this is powered by Unraid standard version system. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth are not compatible with Unraid as of now. So you'll need to use a VM to use these functionalities. And that's kind of a bummer. The N1 NAS storage adopts Unraid disk array. So even if one disk is damaged, it will not cause data loss. And remember, Unraid is not a backup, it's redundancy. And speaking of backups, the M1 supports automatic backups, remote download, intelligent photo albums, music playback, and intelligent partition. So as far as the N1 goes, what else comes in the box? You get a user manual with lots of information. You get your power cord and your power brick. And it also includes screws and a screwdriver for your SSD installation. And that's it. So first things first, let's install a couple of SSDs. So we're gonna buy one 2.5 SATA SSD and one M.2 NVMe SSD. And both SSDs will be four terabytes, so we can run this in mirror configuration. So we're gonna buy two SSDs on Amazon. All right, we're gonna buy the Crucial BX500 four terabyte 3D Nano 2.5 SATA SSD. And the current price is $209. All right, next, we're gonna buy the Crucial P3 4 terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. And this SSD is currently priced at $226. All right, we'll add these to the cart and click buy. And now we're gonna wait for the delivery. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, it's already here? Well, I have to say, Amazon Prime deliveries are getting faster and faster. Pretty cool. All right, let's get the SSDs installed into the NAS. And here are both of our SSDs, the SATA and the M.2 NVMe SSD. Typically, I use Samsung SSDs for my installs, but they are a bit pricier. So I decided to go with Crucial instead. And I have used Crucial SSDs before with no issues. And if everything goes well with the installation and testing, then I'll buy another SATA SSD and another M.2 NVMe SSD. So first, remove the 2.5 inch SATA tray from the NAS. 
So you want to place the SSD into the tray with the screw holes down and then use the provided screws and the screwdriver to secure the SSD to the tray. And make sure to use all four screws. And then once you're done, insert the tray back into the NAS. Installing the NVMe SSD is even easier. Simply slide the NVMe into the slot, then slide up the spring-loaded bracket and push the NVMe back and let go of the spring bracket. Now the SSD is secured. And next, remove the protective film from the heatsink. Then reattach the bottom of the door to the NAS. Easy. So now we'll connect the LinkStation N1 to our network and we'll use a CAT6 and plug it in to the 2.5 gig Ethernet port. And then next, plug in the power and then turn it on. And then now we'll go to our computer and then open any web browser. We'll then type in tower.local. And now we can see the Unraid web interface. And first thing we'll do is change the password and make sure it's a complicated password. So don't use password as password. <laughs> All right, now we're at the Unraid dashboard, and this reveals everything about the N1 NAS. And let's take a quick look at the tabs at the top. We have Main, Shares, Users, Settings, Plugins, Docker, VMS, Apps, and Tools. So now we're going to redeem our activation code for the Unraid license. You'll find the activation code on the card that came inside the box. Just type in the activation code and hit submit. And if you don't have an Unraid account, you're going to have to sign up for one. So sign up with an email and a password. And for security reasons, you'll need to verify your email that you use to sign up for the account. Then you can finish the activation process. And the first thing you want to do is update the OS. So after we update the OS, I'm going to show you how to change the name of the media server. So first, go to Settings, and then Identification, and then you can change the server name if you want to. So I'm going to change it to N1NAS. Now when you log into the server, you're going to use N1NAS.local instead of Tower.local. And of course, you could just leave this the way it is and not change anything. But I like to be different. So next, we're going to assign our two drives. So go down to Slots and pick 3. Next, we're going to assign both drives. We'll assign the NVMe SSD to Disk 1 and the 2.5 SATA SSD to the Parity drive. Like I said before, we're going to run this in mirror configuration. And eventually, I'll get more drives, and then we can set this up in different RAID configurations. And then next, we're going to create some shares, like movies, photos, music, documents, and TV shows. And remember, in the SMB security settings, under Export, choose Yes. I forgot to change this setting, and I had to go back and change it later. If you don't choose Yes, then these folders will not be available for export. And we definitely want these folders available for the Plex Media Server. And guys and gals, if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. It's completely free. Thanks. All right, we're all done with the shares. So to install the Plex Media Server to the M1 NAS, we need to go to the Apps tab. The first thing we have to do is install the Community Application plugin. After it's installed, we can look for the Plex Media Server and install it. We could use Jellyfin instead, but I already have a lifetime Plex Pass, so we'll use Plex instead. But Jellyfin is very good. And I'm going to install the Plex Pass app because I have the lifetime Plex Pass. OK, hit install. And for now, I'm not going to change anything on this screen, so we'll hit done. And I'm going to install one more application. This is Unraid Connect. This allows users to manage, monitor, and maintain their Unraid server from a phone, tablet, laptop, or PC. So once this app is installed, we're going to set up our Plex Media Server and start adding movies and some TV shows. But first, how do you add movies, TV shows, and music to the folders in your M1 NAS? Well, this is how you do it. And first things first, you're going to need some media. And if you're like me, and you have a lot of movies and TV shows on your computer, then this process is super easy. However, if you don't have any media, like movies or TV shows, but you have a bunch of DVDs, then you can use Handbrake to burn those DVDs to digital format on your computer. And yes, there is one more way to obtain movies, TV shows, and music, but I'm no pirate, and if I was one, I wouldn't tell you anyways. 
Arr. So let's transfer some media to the N1 NAS. And we're going to start with movies. So on your PC, look for the Network tab and go ahead and open it. And you should see your N1 NAS server. So double click M1 NAS and you should see all your folders. And remember, if you don't see these folders, then go back to the M1 NAS and make sure export is set to yes for each folder. Now on your computer, open your media folder and we're gonna drop and drag some movies into the movie folder on the M1 NAS. And we have a lot of movies, probably around 3000. So this process will take a while. And you can do the exact same thing with TV shows, music and photos. It's a simple drop and drag. Once all of our media is in the folders, We'll go back to the M1 NAS dashboard, and then we'll go to the main tab and start performing the parity operation, which makes an exact copy on the parity disk. And this operation will take a while. Then once we're done, let's add some media to the Plex server. So go back to the apps tab and go to actions and double click web UI. And as you can see, I already have a Plex account. And if you don't have one, pause the video and sign up right now. Now under N1 NAS, go to the plus tab and go to movies and then go next, and then browse media folder. Then go to media, movies, add, and then add library. Like I said before, we have over 3000 movies, so this will take a while to propagate. So get a cup of coffee. And next, I'll show you how to add TV shows. So go to the plus, TV shows, next, browse media folder, media, then TV shows, then add, and then add library, and that's it. And next, we'll add music. So go back to the plus sign, then music, then next, then browse media folder, then look for the media, and then music, and then hit add, and then add library, and that's it. Once again, we have a lot of music, so this will take a while to propagate. So now that the M1 NAS is all set up, we can now test it out by watching a movie. And every TV in my house has Plex installed on it. So we can watch Plex from any room in this house. And that even includes outside by the pool. And because I have a lifetime Plex pass, I can watch my media server from anywhere in the world. As long as there's mobile data or a Wi-Fi connection. So the question is, is the Link Station N1 worth a $400 price tag? Well, yes and no, so let me explain. If you're looking for a small and even portable mini NAS, then the N1 is a solid purchase. This little guy gives you up to 48 terabytes of storage space, which is more than most people will ever need. This mini NAS does run warm, but not hot. And there is a fan and it's silent. So it's not only small, lightweight and portable, it also makes zero noise. And the only noise that the N1 makes is when you turn it on. As far as setting up the N1 NAS, it's very simple. And I really like the Unraid interface. It's very simple to use. As far as the apps go, there are a ton of apps to choose from. And today I only scratched the surface with Plex. And you could also install Jellyfin instead of Plex and both work very well. As far as the downsides to the N1, there are a few things to talk about. First of all, you do get a free Unraid license for one year, but after that, you're gonna pay $39 a year. And that's kind of a bummer. It would have been nice to have a lifetime Unraid license, just saying. And issue number two is the 2.5 gig ethernet port. It's 2024 and 10 gigs should be the standard for all NAS and media servers. And a 2.5 gig port will slow you down. But that's really it for any downsides to this mini NAS. It's a pretty impressive mini NAS. And the N1 is priced at 399 and that's without any drives. So we're almost at $900 when you add the N1 and the two four terabyte hard drives. And there is a price to be paid when you use all SSDs. They're quite a bit more expensive than disk drives. But with this mini NAS, you're gonna get high performance, which means faster read and write times. So my review for the N1 NAS is eight out of 10 stars. If they fix the 2.5 gig ethernet port and include a lifetime Unraid license, then I would have given it 10 stars. But eight out of 10 stars is still very good. And guys and gals, the M1 product link will be in the description below. And guys and gals, if you want to see the fastest Wi-Fi setting gaming router on the market, check out this video right here. And if you want to see our top five mesh routers, check out this video right here. And with that, guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And for God's sakes, smash the bell icon. And I'll see you in the next video real soon. High five. Peace.